Thank you very much for inviting me. It's, it's really good to be with you, maybe not in person, but um, I'd love to be with you, but um, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing conference. And I'm just here really to talk about growing a, a highly effective community of practice between academics and practitioners. And it's a little bit of a sort of personal story, really, of how I developed a unit, um, my unit called the Maternal and Infant Nutrition and Nurture Unit, MAIN for short, um, and how, how we've grown the unit um, over, over the years and increased our engagement with practitioners, academics, students and a range of other interested parties. So first of all, just to remind you of what a community of practice is, um, the, the concept was or originally came from Jean Love, a cognitive anthropologist, and Etienne Wenger, an educational theorist, and they published a book called Situated Learning in 1991 in Cambridge. And they define a community of practice as a group of people who share a concern or a passion for something they do and learn how to do it better as they interact regularly. And they define three key elements of a community of practice. The domain, members are brought together by a learning need they share. The community, which involves collective learning and becomes a bond among them over time. And the practice, uh, and that relates to interactions that produce resources that affect members' practice. So starting with a problem that my unit is engaged with. So malnutrition is responsible for 45% of, of deaths among children under five years. That's over 3 million deaths per year. And optimal breastfeeding of infants under two has the potential to prevent over 800,000 deaths per year. That's 13% in children under five. And yet only 38% of babies are optimally fed and breastfed globally. This has been highlighted in a recent Lancet series, which I've referred to there. So this problem is engaging groups and communities of practice from around the world in high, middle and low income countries. So the Maternal and Infant Nutrition and Nurture Unit um, was established in 2000 by myself and a colleague who I'll introduce to you on, a, on our next, the next few slides. But basically, it's an interdisciplinary group that focuses upon complex political, cultural, psychosocial and economic influences upon maternal, maternal and infant nutrition and nurture. The nature of the relationship that's engendered between mother and infant as a consequence of various type kinds of nutritive and nurturing behaviours, with a particular emphasis on breastfeeding. And thirdly, we focus on the preterm infant and in ways of enhancing the parent-infant relationship in the neonatal unit context. So we have four strategic objectives. The first is to conduct distinctive, interdisciplinary, internationally recognised research and scholarship in maternal and infant nutrition and nurture, to engage with local, national and international strategic initiatives, to embrace the public health, social exclusion and diversity agendas with regard to the field of maternal and infant nutrition and nurture, and fourthly, to build and maintain strong and stable external partnerships and collaborations to include the World Health Organization, UNICEF, DH, NHS and charities. So introducing the people that are involved in the unit, um, obviously you've met me um, virtually and um, I lead the unit um, and I also have visiting professorships at University of Western Sydney, Delana University, where I work on secondment, and Chinese University of Hong Kong. 
I mentioned my colleague who was there from the beginning, Dr. Victoria Hall Moran, where she looks a little bit younger than me, which she is. Um, and she is an associate professor in maternal and child nutrition. And she's a nutritionist by background. She's also the course leader for our professional doctorate in health. And she's a senior editor of a journal, Maternal and Child Nutrition. This was one of our innovations. We felt that we needed a, a, a journal that embraced maternal and child nutrition, uh, reaching a multidisciplinary audience of um, academics and practitioners working in a different, different ways in this field. And we have a psychologist, uh, Jill Thompson. She's a, an associate professor in perinatal health. She joined us as a post, doing her postdoc studies and now is a key member of staff. Nicola Crossland, who is from a neuroscience, biological sciences background, works as a research associate. Um, we have an, um, about 15 doctoral students, one of whom is Anna Byram, and she's also a member of staff and a joint senior editor of Practicing Midwife. Then we have some um, visiting staff as well. Um, so our first visiting staff member is Rafael Perez Escamila, who is an epidemiologist from Yale. Then we have Professor Virginia Schmid. She's from a midwifery background um, from Western Sydney University. She hosted our conference in 2014. We have Renea Flacking, who is a professor of neonatal nursing and she came and did postdoctoral studies in Maine in 2009 and she's now a professor at her own university in Delana and she hosted our conference in 2016. And then we have Dr Tanya Cassidy who came and did a, worked as an EU funded uh, research fellow on a Marie Curie project and she's now finished that and she's a visiting fellow. So, as you can see, we are quite a multidisciplinary team. My background is in midwifery and we have a whole range of other um, disciplines represented there. As you can see from this diagram, we have three, uh, three domains, if you like, maternal and child nutrition, global policies and practices of infant and young child feeding and perinatal health. So we've grown into those three areas and each is headed by a senior member of staff who I've introduced you to. One of the key things that we do um, every year um, is, is hold a three-day international conference. Um, th this, this, we've, we've held our first conference in 2007 um, and we now hold that, that every year, once alternate years in the UK, and then the other year, the other alternate year somewhere else. So we've been to Sydney, Sweden, Delano University, and this year we all went to Florida, which was very nice. And we, we do this in collaboration with some of our collaborators. Um, and this conference um, attracts practitioners, academics, um, from a range of uh, fields, including health sciences, nursing, midwifery, allied health, uh, medicine, and um, anthropology, um, and to name, to name but a few, also people working in, in not NGOs, charities associated with this field. Um, people can submit an abstract um, and um, if that's accepted, they can either come and present or um, have a poster presentation. So we have around 100 people sub, um, actually have ac abstracts accepted. Um, and then we also have some exciting keynote speakers. And we actually publish the journal in a book of abstracts in the Journal of Maternal and Child Nutrition. Um, so it gives an opportunity for people um, and maybe to publish for the first time in the form of an abstract. So I'd encourage you to send in an abstract if you want to. The call for abstracts is out and I believe the flyers are available to you at the conference. So here's an example of some of the keynote speakers we have in 2019. Um, so we have Richmond um, Era Tree from Ghana and we have Lawrence Gummerstrawn from the WHO, Geneva, Roxana Haider from Bangladesh, Mary Renfrew, midwifery background from the UK, 
Daniel Sellen, an anthropologist from Toronto, and Cecilia Tamori, who's an anthropologist anthropologist at Durham University. So quite a wide range of um, international guest speakers. The journal, which I've just mentioned that we publish the abstracts in, um, has gone from strength to strength um, and now has a current impact factor of 3.233. So it's a great opportunity for publishing. One of the things we try to do is publish books um, although um, in health sciences and related um, disciplines, journal articles hold more credibility in, the, um, in terms of research excellence, we feel that books are a crucial way of um, reaching practitioners and academics. Um, and we find practitioners are particularly glad to have a, a set of edited chapters in, an, in a comfortable book. Um, here, here's one, for example, Infant and Young Child Feeding. Um, challenges to implementing a global strategy. We, we also link with other units, um, so we, we find that to increase our impact and, um, and diffusion of ideas and innovations, then um, that, that's a really useful thing to do. So for example, uh, members of my um, unit, uh, Maine, uh, uh, three members of us are also involved in the SCENE group, which is um, an acronym for Separation and Closeness Experiences in the Neonatal Unit. This is, this is a collection of um, neonatologists, um, midwives, nurses, a range of um, health scientists and allied health professionals um, and psychologists, all working together to improve the neonatal environment for mothers and infants and we published our first collective paper in 2012 to um, emphasise our remit. So that, that's been very um, important in our work. We've engaged um, particularly with initiatives such as the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative, that's the UNICEF and WHO um, initiative, which many of you will be familiar with, that centres around protecting, promoting and supporting breastfeeding and ending harmful practices such as rigid determination of frequency and duration of feeds, separation of mothers and babies, an unnecessary supplement of mentation of breastfeeding babies with infant formula. Um, we've also, um, myself and Victoria, were involved as facilitators in the development of the global strategy for infant and young child feeding. And this is still the international benchmark for optimising infant and young child feeding. Um, as I mentioned, one, one of our books, we've actually got chapters um, from a um, range of practitioners and academics um, looking at the actual challenges of implementing a global strategy um, in particular country contexts, but also in particular local practice contexts, whether that's community or um, facility based. Um, and that's been really um, useful um, for people to actually write chapters in that and, and read them. So um, good way of seeing what, what, what the challenges are for other, other people working um, in the field. A lot of our work has centred around the importance of relationships at an organisational, staff, parent and mother, baby, family. Um, and we presented this in a summary paper um, at a, at a neonatal conference at Imperial College London and wrote an accompanying paper in early human development. And some of the organisations have taken this on board. For example, the UK Baby Friendly Initiative um, have actually changed their um, standards um, and written a, a, a large booklet um, drawing on our research plus the research of others it's led to quite a paradigm shift in terms of focusing on relationships rather than just simply um, uh, protecting, promoting and supporting breastfeeding, although that is still very important. So we feel we've had real impact through these strategic agendas. And UNICEF UK have then changed their standard documents, their staff development and education, 
university standards for education, their assessment process, and new booklets for practitioners, for example, having meaningful conversations with mothers, which is a little bit embarrassing that we need to all learn more about that. However, practitioners have found that quite useful. Um, and also UNICEF um, accreditation of pre-service education for midwives and health visitors we've been very involved in. And recently at UCLan got our accreditation, which we were celebrating. And WHO you, um, are now at a, on a global level have um, produced a series of systematic reviews um, around protecting, promoting and supporting breastfeeding. Um, and that's uh, based on 22 systematic reviews um, using Cochrane procedures plus um, qualitative um, syntheses using grade circle approach. And based on that, based on the work of um, a, a whole range of um, academics and practitioners, they've now produced in 2018 um, a new implementation guidance. So those of you working in the field with the Baby Friendly Hospital Initiative um, have, have a new set of guidelines which are firmly grounded in the evidence. And this shows how um, the evidence base and research and application to practice has grown um, over, over the years, which is very exciting. So in conclusion, I'd, I'd really encourage you to um, look at us as an example of starting very small and growing larger, having more influence, more impact engaging more practitioners in a range of ways, more academics, um, uh, with a very multidisciplinary focus, and um, really um, enjoying working as a community of practice in the process. So, um, and I'm more than happy to enter into email communication with any of you if you want to, if you've got any follow-up questions. Um, and I wish you an amazing conference and um, I wish I could be with you, but have a great time. Thank you.